I wish my grandmother had a YouTube channel when she was younger. I would follow her and learn directly from her about kindness and compassion. I wish Nelson Mandela had a Twitter account so that I could learn about apartheid from him in 140 characters or less. <laughs> Better yet, I wish Jesus had a Facebook page so that I could comment, like, and share the video of him walking on water. <laughs> Who here has never had a single account on the internet? I cannot raise my hand, but to those that can, I applaud you. I would like to quote the TEDx agreement that I signed to be here speaking to you today. <laughs> you grant TEDx, ABQ, and TED the right to record, stream, film, and photograph your presentation at the event and to distribute, broadcast, edit, translate, or otherwise disseminate it without any further approval from you in whole or in part throughout the world in perpetuity in any and all media now known or hereafter developed. <laughs> Pretty crazy, right? Who here has ever agreed to an end user's license agreement? <laughs> it's the little checkbox on social media and websites that say, I agree to these terms. I know I have plenty of them. Now, Facebook's end user's license agreement <laughs> is even more amazing than the TED agreement that I signed to be here. Anyone who has ever had a Facebook account has agreed to it. Please say it with me if you, if you have it memorized. <laughs> For content that is covered by intellectual property rights, like photos and videos, you specifically give us the following permission. You grant us a non-exclusive, transferable, sub-licensable, royalty-free, worldwide license to use any intellectual property content that you post on in connection or with Facebook. This license ends when you delete your content or your account unless your content has been shared with others and they have not yet deleted it. <laughs> so, you own your content, but Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, etc., have the right to do with whatever they want with it because it's in their end user's license agreement whose value really is it. I asked the lawyer how much it would cost me to get a legal assessment of the Facebook terms and conditions. They told me $10,000. I don't have that type of money just to sign up to a website. Do any of you? Well, we politic over gay rights and abortions. Behemoths like Peter Thiel, Mark, Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, etc., make more money and have access to more human data than governments, religion, and oil. This brings me to why I'm here today and to the idea that I think is worth spreading. People equal data, which equals value. Jobs. We now live in a data-driven economy. Question, in this environment, what does work look like? Well, in a data-driven economy, our data is valuable, and it is creating jobs. What does this mean? This means that every time we sign up, log in, upload, and share, we are creating mass amounts of data, which creates mass amounts of money. A ton of jobs. You might be thinking, in this environment, what can I do? Here are a few examples. And in the first example, I use YouTube and myself. I make a YouTube channel about how much I really love kittens. <laughs> I then build a subscriber base of people who also really love kittens. Kellogg sees that I have a highly targeted and highly engaged audience, so they contract me to do a video about kittens and Pop-Tarts. <laughs> I make money. 
or I don't, because the majority of the time, this is not how it works. But then again, sometimes it does. Here's another example. And this example, for some, it might be easier to understand leveraging your own data. In this example, I use Amazon and again myself. I just finished the, bat, the uh, comic book, Batman the Killing Joke, and I loved it. So, I go on Amazon and I get my own unique URL to the book. I then go on to Facebook and I share that unique URL of that book and I tell all my comic book friends that I absolutely loved it and that they need to go read it immediately. A percentage of them go and buy it. Again, I make money. So, question. How can Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, etc., enable me to make money and off of my own data? Well, here's a possible scenario. And in this scenario, I use Facebook and Starbucks. And again, myself. <laughs> I like Starbucks on Facebook, and 800 of my plus friends see that I like it. A percentage of my friends then go like Starbucks on Facebook. Facebook and Starbucks have now leveraged my data and my value. Question, where's my cut? <laughs> it is my data and it is my value. So again, where's my cut? We do live in a data-driven economy. And what does work, like, work look like in this economy? Because our value, our data is valuable, and it is creating jobs. So the question that I have for you is, in this environment, what's your job? <laughs>